The iPhone 14 has been out for a few months now, and as much as I love our mirrorless and cinema cameras, the iPhone's what we end up shooting so much of our life on. We've already taken it all around the world, shooting our travels and our personal memories, but also brands are asking us to shoot more of our commercial work on it because they're looking for that authentic social media look. So on all of our bigger commercial jobs, there's been some component that we're shooting on our phones. And now there is an iPhone accessory that really feels like it was developed for professionals. It's the Light Chaser Pro 14. This video is sponsored by Polar Pro, so as always, that means it won't be a review, just showcasing some of the features of this really impressive piece of hardware. The new Light Chaser is available for the iPhone 14 Pro and 14 Pro Max. It starts with their soft case that just kind of acts like a regular silicone case. It's soft and flexible. It's gonna absorb any shocks if you drop your phone or hit it against something. And you can easily use this as a standard iPhone case as you're switching back and forth. But let's keep going. The more exciting thing is the cage. It's milled out of a solid piece of aluminum. If you've got any experience with professional cinema camera cages, this feels very familiar. It's really rigid and hard and durable. You cannot flex or bend it in any way. This is an incredibly professional piece of gear. This is what you would find on a proper set. Polar Pro has been making a name for themselves in that professional world for a while now. This year they released their pivot system, which I didn't do a full review on this, so I just wanna show it to you now because I was really impressed with it. Next, we're gonna fit that soft shock absorbing case into the hard, rigid cage. It fits in there snugly, really easily goes in. And then there's two clips on top that you're just gonna close and they firmly snap shut so you know they won't open accidentally. There are these little levers on top so you can open it back up, but it really does just stay in there and it is not gonna move until you want it to. But of course there's cutaways on the side so you can access your mute switch, volume, and power button. A while ago I made a video about how you get the most cinematic look out of your iPhone and that was using their Light Chaser 11. It really focused on being a grip and giving you a shutter button button and mounting lens filters to it. But now when you take this cage and add these handles, you can operate it just like you would with a professional camera. Not that an iPhone's not professional. The cage has standard quarter 20 mounting points all around it. So any accessory screws in easily. And these handles also have airy locking pins. Those are those small little pins on the side. And that means that any accessory you lock in there does not rotate. They're an industry standard thing. You're gonna find them all over the place. So other accessories use them as well. Quick example, here's a ball head from Wooden Camera that I use to mount monitors. It's also rock solid and it's got airy locking pins. They've also got this little Bluetooth wireless shutter button. It screws onto the top of the handle and then you have a hardware method of triggering the record button. You just use the provided hex key to tighten it into the top. It's not going anywhere. Turn it on and pair it with your phone. This setup is what I wanna start showing up to jobs with. Like, I know that the way your phone looks is not the most important thing, but <laughs> this suddenly makes an iPhone look a lot more professional, you gotta admit. But it also provides a ton of protection and flexibility in terms of ways that you can expand it or attach it to other things. An important thing is I can now add an Arca Swiss blade to any of those quarter 20 mounts that I mentioned. This small one is from Joby and it'll fit into any standard size plate, but without making this whole setup much bigger. But let's do more than just be practical. Let's rig this thing out. So this is what I'd call my documentary setup. I've added a Lytra LED light to the side and a Deity D4 Duo as the microphone. Something I noticed right away is that I've tried to mount these little mics to my iPhone before, but often the windscreens get in the way of the wider lenses. But on this, I can mount it far over to the side, so that's not an issue. So if you're actually covering a story with your phone, doing some kind of run and gun stuff, this setup is gonna really do everything you need. And in that case, I'd recommend not adding any lenses so you can quickly switch between the iPhone's built-in lenses. But if you wanna make something beautiful and look amazing, you can add moment lenses as well. That 1X main lens on an iPhone is the highest quality by a lot, much larger sensor, better stabilized. Adding either their ultra wide or telephoto lens is gonna be higher quality than using the built-in lenses of the iPhone. If you've used moment lenses before, remember you've got to clean it first because if you leave any dust or debris, especially inside, then it won't look better than the built-in lens. You've gotta make sure it's in pristine quality. So for fun, let's use their 1.33 anamorphic lens. Now keep in mind, this is real anamorphic. It's not adding an effect. So that also means that you need to shoot in third-party software that supports that. I recently did a full breakdown of how I make videos on the iPhone and there's a ton of details in there, but I mentioned a few apps that I'd definitely look into, which are Filmic Pro, Moments Pro app. After posting that video, a lot of the comments mentioned Cinema P3, which I hadn't used before, but looks solid. Now let's put it all together, add some filters and see what the footage looks like. I think a lot of people's first experience with Polar Pro is their ND filters. The variable ND they did with Peter McKinnon has become 
the go-to standard for all the YouTubers I know, so many professional creators. It is just a perfect balance between quality and price. And I'm saying that outside of the sponsoredness of this video. I mean, this just is standard. Like, look around, you're gonna see it on a lot of lenses. And for good reason, it's incredibly high quality. Now they brought that same quality to some smaller filters that are made for the phone. One little detail that I really appreciate once you've rigged it up like this is it just stands on its own. If you put it on a table, your iPhone will just sit up looking forward. That can be very helpful on a shoot. Let's go through a few of their filter options. They've got their variable NDs, which reduce the amount of light coming in, so you can slow down your shutter speed. If you're shooting in 24 frames per second, you probably wanna shoot at a 50th of a second. And you can get that in three to five stops or six to seven stops. If you're looking for a more powerful look, they've got the blue morphic. So without having to go through all the rigmarole of a real anamorphic lens, you get that lens flare. It's got kind of a techno future vibe, makes me think of Transformers or Star Trek, any of those big blue flares. They've also got the gold morphic, which has those amber flares. I think it's a little more organic. And probably my favorite of them is mist. This is like a traditional black mist filter and just gives you a bit of bloom and softness around your highlights. It doesn't make it look blurry or out of focus. It just takes the edge off the highlights. I can probably show you a little bit right now. It's kind of a subtle look and I think non-filmmakers don't really realize it's happening. But if you just look around that tube back there, you can see that the bright points, there's just a little bit of spread around it and a mist filter is the best way to do it. And if you need your variable ND and your mist at the same time, that is a lens as well. They have the same three to five stops or six to seven stops. All right, now let's build another rig. This is gonna be our ultimate influencer rig and it's gonna be vertical. This is one thing that's bugged me about some of the other accessories out there on the market is they really focused on horizontal shooting because that's what cinematographers do. But I think the reality of a lot of professional jobs that are done on phones, is that they're shot vertically. That's why the phone was selected. Otherwise we'd be using a bigger camera. So this is the kind of setup that I'm gonna be using all the time. We'll put a wireless mic on top so it can be hooked up to a lav. I'm gonna use the Moment 18 millimeter lens so we get the ultra wide look, but on all of the quality of that 48 megapixel 1X main lens on the iPhone 14 Pro. The D4 Duo actually has two inputs so I can run the wireless mic into the shotgun mic and record both channels so that I can have somebody far away, hear them clearly, and the audio coming from near the camera is also top quality, and then I can choose which one I want later in the edit. I mean, this setup is legitimately awesome. Like if you're live streaming, if you're reporting in any way, this is so cool. I, I, I wanna carry this around with me everywhere. If you're wondering how I got the filters to stay on those moment lenses, they've got these little adapters that have the standard Polar Pro mounts. So you just squeeze the lens into it and you can lock in your filter onto the front. Light Chaser Pro 14 is a complete system and it's really adaptable to whatever your workflow is. So if you wanna see how my workflow, shooting and editing on the iPhone 14 works, now's the time to click on that video all about it. Links are in the description for all the products I mentioned and I'll see you guys in the next one.